This one's for all you up and coming mechanics, your AMPs in training, your AME apprentices, whatever you want to call yourselves from whatever part of the world you are. This is what I would recommend as a basic get you going amount of tools and what you might need to start in the industry. And if you've seen my other stuff, you know I'm not a picky guy, I'm not a tool truck snob by any means, although all you see here, majority of it anyway is off the tool truck that doesn't mean you have to to go do the same thing i've been doing this coming up on nine years now and it took me a while to get here so i started off with the cheaper stuff and it works just fine but this is some crucial stuff here that i'll show you just think of the tools themselves not the brand as uh as what i show you into what you need we'll start on the left here screwdrivers of course i'm just showing you my ratcheting ones here right now but uh, you're gonna want a basic set of uh, just a regular combination set of screwdrivers. I mean, you can pick sets up of those anywhere for reasonable money, but uh, most of the time I find, I do line maintenance and well, a mix of line and a little bit of heavy, but uh, oftentimes when I go out, I'm just gonna be grabbing these ratcheting ones anyway. And again, many different brands make ratcheting screwdrivers. Uh, I've had, three different kinds including this these snap-on ones personally I find these I like these the best but again that's that's up to the individual I like the ability to change out the the tips on them these are all interchangeable that is kind of nice you can get a little extra torque on the longer one I don't know the, the gear mechanism feels better the ratcheting mechanism there's more teeth and yeah it's they're just good all-around screwdrivers course a little more pricey but you're gonna be using a lot of ratcheting screwdrivers invest in a half decent ratcheting screwdriver combination wrench set as well or sorry wrench screwdriver set you know your standard your, your slotted uh, your flats um, Phillips uh, for us Canadians there's no Robertson's really in uh, aviation unfortunately it's a really really good bit but you, you won't see any of those on aircraft and some exotic quad wings, tri wings, I mean you can buy individual screwdrivers with those bits. They're a little more pricey or you can just buy the bits themselves and run them in your ratcheting screwdriver. Ratcheting screwdriver is kind of a jack of all trades so to speak. Another do it all sort of thing, I always have this in my pocket for when I don't have anything else on me. Again, I'm sure there's other brands that, that make an equivalent. This just happens to be the snap-on one, it's reasonably priced. I think it was like 60 bucks Canadian, so that's probably like 10 US dollars right now. And uh, this has the, there are four bits in here total. Phillips and slotted, different sizes, and this pops out. And you get the smaller, smaller ones on this half. This, this flips out as well, and there's a Phillips on the other end of that. So this is just for last minute tightening up panels or who knows, if you find something on the line and you just need a screwdriver real quick, this thing is always nice to have in your pocket. There are others that'll do the exact same job again, so don't, don't feel like you need to get it, but there's the part number if you want it. And keeping on the screwdriver theme, you're gonna get sick of running them by hand. I mean, some of these screws on these airplanes, there's literally hundreds of them, and you're gonna be ripping out hundreds on a leading edge uh, or on, on a whole wing section or something, depending on what you're working on. So you're gonna get tired of doing that by hand, and you're gonna want a, a drill. I I like this little rigid one. Obviously, it doesn't have much power, but you really shouldn't be using these to, to break the torque on a screw that's that's really tight. That's what you do by hand, and then you come over with the drill. But we'd all be lying to you if we said we, we didn't just use this <laughs> right off the hop until you strip it, and then you get mad, and then you go to this, and then you struggle, and you know how it is. I recommend this little or the smaller the drill the better really like oftentimes you're going to be working above your head for extended periods and uh i don't know unless you want to be huge well uh also like this physically will fit into areas that a, a larger drill can't so that's another plus for one of these smaller sized ones i know milwaukee makes them too and probably a nicer drill overall than this one uh, but uh whatever this thing was 100 bucks it came with an impact as well two batteries and yeah, it's been good for a few years so far. You need an electric drill. Um, and I mean, this also doubles for this, if you do any sheet metal work and you don't have an air drill, again, you already have a drill. So you can throw a, a drill bit in there and go to town. So it's kind of versatile in that way. Combination wrench set. I've got three 
full combination wrench sets. I just happened to grab this one out of here. Don't feel the need to, to buy um, fancy ones. These are considered fancy here in Canada. Great tools out of uh, Toronto. But um, anyway, yeah, a regular just combination wrench set. Again, like you don't need to buy Snap-on, you don't need to buy Mac or any of that crap. Uh, I ripped Mastercraft for many years, the Canadian tire brand, and uh, I did just fine. Quarter inch all the way. To, oh, don't mind all the Uncle Ben's, by the way. He's just kind of starting to surround my, my box here. But quarter inch all the way up to, in this set, I am up to an inch and a sixteenth. Inch and sixteenth don't use a hell of a lot. Uh, inch and an eighth they use sometimes, inch and a quarter for some lines, but you want a, a, a good range. You want at least one big complete set with 1132. That's also crucial. You need an 1130 seconds wrench in in that set so combination wrench set minimum one you're gonna end up buying more especially mini ones too uh, again I, I i thought about putting them in this list as must-haves but you can get by without but i they're they're cheap as well you can buy sets the the stubby stubby versions of these combo wrench sets are another thing that i would be looking to get if uh, if you're just starting out and angle wrenches I ran the, these Power Fist ones for many years. Similar angle to the Snap-on ones, just this one is, is, a, is slightly different, but I never had an issue with these. This set was from 3 8 up to an inch and a quarter, I believe. Um, yeah, good set. I ended up getting a good deal though on the Snap-on set. I don't have it completed already, but I've got the quarter inch up to the 3 quarter. And as you can see, there's slightly, slightly more of a bend on this than, than the other. And it honestly, most guys say, yeah, it, it does make a difference. Don't get me wrong. I'd be lying to you if I said uh, it didn't, but I ran these ones just fine for so many years. I never had an instance where I couldn't undo or tighten up something at, at a certain angle with either one of the heads. It's just, um, I don't know, the angle is a little better on these. And you get that bullshit bling factor, I suppose, too, as you go broke buying wrenches. So offset wrenches are kind of a must as well. Uh, a lot of lines you deal with, hydraulic lines, uh, could be pneumatic, could be oil, could, like anything. Uh, these are very nice to have to get into tight areas. And you don't need a massive set to begin with like this. If you get the 3 8 up to 3 quarter to begin with, that will probably nail about 80% of what you're going to be doing uh, to start off with. So you don't need to get this whole uh, variety just, just right away. Lights. This is another big one, and I should add a mirror too, I suppose, to this this list. But uh, yeah, I'll get it out later. A mirror should be sitting in here too. I would say you need you need a friggin' mirror. Lights, regular old flashlights. Don't skimp on these either. Uh, you can buy them cheap, obviously, uh, everywhere on Amazon and stuff these days. So get a decent one and a good headlamp too. You're gonna be wearing this lots. Uh, but yeah. The better your light is, the better chance you have of seeing something maybe very critical, right? So that's all part of the job. And for a little pizzazz, uh, these are dirt cheap as well on Amazon. This is a UV light. And you'd be surprised how nice this thing is at finding oil leaks. 2380 turbine oil shows up uh, kind of like this white on, uh, on the surfaces when you shine this over it. So on like a engine case or something that you can't really see you shine this around uh, near a seal this will this will show whether it's leaking or not pliers i left out lock wire or as you americans call it safety wire pliers out of the list here because i mean technically you really don't need them and you're just starting out it honestly is better that you learn how to do it by hand or with old tried and true duck bills and uh I mean, safety wire pliers can be expensive for some people too, so you don't need it to, to get the job done. Yes, it's a lot easier. Yes, it's faster in most instances, but you don't really need it to get the job done. These kind of three are your big ones here. Uh, this is, these are flush cutters. 
And if you do a lot of avionics work or shoving your hands in holes in an airplane that have wiring bundles, and if the last guy didn't tie harnesses up with flush cut uh, zip ties, you are going to get opened up everywhere and you're going to curse his name. So do everyone a favor, get flush cutters. They don't have to be Nipex ones like these. There's many brands that make them and they're dirt cheap, but it's just, just be nice to everybody else and buy these. Basic needle nose pliers. These are Mac branded Nipex ones, but again, it's just a pair of friggin' needle nose pliers. Uh, nothing too fancy or crazy. These are probably, oh, I don't know, eight inches long. Uh, obviously, you're gonna want other pairs down the road, different bends, different lengths, but just a standard straight pair for now uh, will be just fine. Cutters. Um, these I should really put away and bring back a more gen general pair. I'll put two cutters in here. These are these snap-on ones, I will say. The long neck, kind of high leverage. These things are pretty minty. Lock wiring in tight places, cutting tails, and they have quite a bit of power to them actually too. Great little cutters, but I really should be showing you these. These are just this generic pair of dykes that I put some silicone in the jaw. Uh, to collect lock wire when you cut it. These are again, these are probably eight inch as well ish Just a generic pair of side cutters doesn't have to be nipex again Get this stuff when you're later in your career and you make more money, but uh, yeah gonna need side cutters and then yeah duck bills lock wiring uh, Holding other stuff Adele clamps you name it duck bills. You'll be using lots of these guys and I'm gonna put these in the must-have category because I'm just so in love with them. These are the Smooth Jaw Nipex ones. This came as a set on Amazon. I want to have more. They make smaller and bigger ones than even what I have here. But when you're out in the bush or you're just climbing on a wing to do a job and uh, just a, a quick job, it, it's not a bad idea to have a pair of these in, in your pocket. They grab beautifully onto li uh, lines I'm talking especially, um, B-nuts of, of certain fittings. But yeah, these things, I can't say enough good stuff about these. Every every air aircraft mechanic should have a set of the, these guys here. Coming down to ratchets and sockets, if you don't already know, quarter inch is king in aviation. You can have a standard uh, 3 8 small set in your toolbox floating around. It's not a bad idea. It doesn't have to be anything fancy because you're not going to use it too much. Again, I'm generalizing. This is for, it, it all depends on the machines you're working on, but in general, I've worked on a pretty wide variety of them, and in general, you're going to be mostly using quarter inch. You don't need, uh, what do I have here, seven <laughs> ratchets like I do, but uh, they all have their own purpose. and. On a big job, uh, I will have sockets on four of them at once, and so get a kind of a, a range of them. You get everything from these little kind of one-way bearing style guys, Mac uh, MR4C. I use this all the time. I'm just a generic. This is a gray one, nothing special, with an indexing head. For when you really want to get real fancy. This Blackhawk or Proto one that actually has the ratcheting handle and it drives the head. Yeah, I've only used this maybe once or twice. A gear wrench, they make good stuff. This is a gear wrench is an awesome option as an alternative to the the big players, the snaps, Snap On and Max and Matcos. They do make high, pretty high quality stuff. And uh, their ratchets, the 84, I don't know, what do they call them? The, their 84 tooth ratchets are very nice. I don't have one personally, but they're they're the real deal. This 120XP sounds like a zipper. And then this Power Fister from Princess Auto here in Canada is my kind of wheel. I break down King Air wheels with this one here for when I want a little more torque. The point is you need a, a range. You don't need seven, but you, you kind of want a range of quarter inch ratchets. Some small, some long, maybe some indexing, different teeth counts. Um, yeah sockets. I only put out my 12 point quarter inch um, to begin with. You do want six point as well, but when you come across 12 point fasteners, you obviously need a 12 point. And when you come across six point fasteners with a 12 point, you can use them, but you just, it's, you hope it's not uh, in a high torque application because a six point will grab a six point 
fastener a lot better than a 12 point will grab a 12 point fastener so you want both deeps and shallows just a generic set you can get mediums as well too they still sell you uh, bonus points if you get up to 9 16 I know Snap-on makes 5 8 I think it's the biggest quarter inch drive sockets they have. I just don't have them. Most of what you're going to be using is say 9 16 not, not even really, half, 7 16 3 8 there's a lot, 11 32 and some quarter inch stuff, oh 5 16 as well, so the smaller ones. A lot of the fasteners are just this size. So anyway this is, was just a quick very generic if I was starting all over again and knowing what I know now, these are kind of the tools that I would buy first. Obviously it's built upon from here and uh, you kind of get multiples of everything or different versions of each. For when you're just starting uh, and you have a little wee, say, handheld toolbox and you don't have a tool chest, um, these will get you by for the most part. And you just hope that people that you're working with aren't dinks and whatever you don't have, they'll let you borrow it. And as time goes on too, once you start borrowing a tool, say you need it three times in a span of a few months, well then you probably should buy it yourself because you know you're going to be using it. It's another kind of good way of trying to figure out how, what you do and don't need. Don't get lost in the brand of what you're buying or what I'm showing you here. I'm not saying you have to buy the Snap-on this or the Nipex that. It's just the tool itself. <laughs> what it was designed for but anyway hope this makes sense and helps some of you guys out and yeah we'll talk to you soon